Hello YouTube, and in today's video we're going to take a look at this Retina MacBook Pro. This is a late 2013 13 inch model, which has been uh, upgraded, so to speak, from the factory. So it was a custom order machine, and uh, yeah, I got this not too long ago, uh, just because I wanted another Mac, and I saw this one for a price that I really couldn't resist, and I should be able to uh, actually flip it if I wanted to, which I might at some point. Uh, so I just took it. Um, it. It's in really good condition. Of course, it is a almost five-year-old laptop. It's four and a half years old, just over four years now, actually. And uh, that's always a risk. But uh, the specifications really don't lie. This is a 2.6 gigahertz Core i5. This is already a Haswell machine. It has eight gigabytes of RAM. A 256 gigabyte SSD and uh, Intel Iris graphics. So the major upgrades here are of course the 2.6 GHz i5, a 256 SSD, the base model has a 2.4 i5 and a 128GB SSD. So that's a pretty neat upgrade right there. So this must have been a pretty expensive machine back in the day and uh, I didn't even pay uh, half of what a new one would ever cost so I think that's pretty good. And the battery is still in pretty good condition as well. I don't know if I have coconut battery on here. Apparently I do not, so... Of course, this is my Mavericks installation because I figured it would be a good idea to also run the original operating system on this machine. And of course, this thing being a Retina, the display is very sharp indeed. Uh, this machine does not suffer from the... Uh, issues with the screen coding because the display unit on this one has actually been changed already. So let's put it on actual retina mode. There we go. So yeah, this already has a brand spanking new display. There we go. Gorgeous uh, Word 2011. Battery is still in good shape, like I mentioned. Um, right now it's saying it still has about four hours left, it's at 40%. And uh, I can definitely say from using it in High Sierra, I, sh I think I got about around six to ten hours usually on battery, depending on what I'm doing. If I'm just browsing the web, casual stuff like that, I will get about eight hours out of it. And if I turn the screen brightness down, I'm just doing some offline stuff like listening to music and writing up some stuff then it'll, it'll easily do about 10 hours still on its original battery. So this machine has definitely been treated very well in, by its previous owner, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, Mavericks really isn't all that amazing to, to see, but it's just a little bit of fun I had with the machine. So let's actually uh, boot it up into something a bit more modern. If it'll let us. Of course, while that is happening, we can also take a look at uh, the keyboard on the machine. Of course, it is also in very good condition. There aren't any major keys with blemishes or wear on them. It's in definitely very good shape. The trackpad is also basically the same story. Just have to hold down the uh, option key here. It's it's also in good shape. Of course, it worked with all various uh, gestures. It is not a force touch trackpad, so you don't have all the fancy you can click anywhere style and. Uh, it's just not as nice as the latest MacBooks in that regard, but the keyboard is a little bit better than what you find in, for instance, the 12-inch MacBook or the uh, the MacBook Pro from 2016. The 2017 MacBook Pros are actually reasonably nice to type on. They have the revised uh, butterfly switches, and they're actually quite a bit nicer to type on. But uh, it's still... Uh, I still think that the original keyboard on this one is, is, is a little bit better. Of course, the OG keyboard for the MacBook Pro, which was actually, actually debuted in the, um, in the PowerBook G4, that's still the, the best laptop keyboard, I think, uh, that's out there by a long shot. That's not, even, that's not even a question, that's just a fact. But uh, the new butterfly switches definitely aren't bad. Definitely very nice uh, revision on that. So yeah, here we are in High Sierra, so now we're back in the modern days of macOS. 
Mavericks really shows what has been in the term in terms of uh, the Mac OS and High Sierra is just the latest iteration of course showing the current direction and possibly the future direction of the Mac OS uh, in Apple's vision there. I should have coconut battery in here so we can actually take a look at the uh, real battery health here. So I take it, type in coconut it's not actually showing anything so apparently I don't have it on here either so we'll have to download it. That is okay too. So, well, well, one thing I will say, I really enjoy using this machine because it's definitely super fast. Of course, it has the PCI Express SSD. This is one of the first generations of that. It debuted in the uh, 2012 Retinas, but it's definitely very nice in this one as well. It's slightly faster. It doesn't come close to the 15-inch uh, early 2015 Retina I used to have, and it definitely doesn't come close to the uh, latest uh, 2017 uh, Retinas, but uh, it's a very nice and very fast SSD. You really don't notice a difference between this one and the 2015 or the 2017. I can tell from experience, so it's definitely something that uh, a machine that will very happily uh, stick with you for a couple of years, that's for sure. Uh, the design capacity here in uh, coconut battery says the battery is still at 91.3% uh, health. It has had about 280 cycles, so it's pretty lightly used over the years. And it is actually from the 14th of April of 2014, so it's actually a late 2013 model that was produced in early to mid-2014. So it is indeed uh, just over four years old now. That's pretty good. And of course the battery is uh, rapidly discharging at, uh, at this point. But that's okay. Wow, now it actually... The design capacity is going up. It was at 90%, then it went to 91 point something, and now it's at 92.7%. Right, so that's accurate. <clears throat> Let's say it's 90%. <laughs> it's still good. That's uh, that's all that I care about. So I'm not really sure what the future is for this machine. I mean, I really, like I said, I enjoy using it. It's a very nice machine for doing my web browsing and email and just the casual stuff. I sometimes hook it up to my dual display setup on my on my desk. Just if I don't need to do anything graphically intensive, then I will use my MacBook Pro. And uh, that suits me very well. I really like having a very light machine to carry around with me whenever I need to do some uh, mobile stuff and just when I don't really need all the graphical horsepower that my desktop offers, which is a Ryzen 7 2700X with 16 gigs of RAM and uh, GTX 1060 and the good stuff. This is definitely for just your everyday tasks. And if I really don't need to use my desktop, I will actually dock this thing somewhere and uh, use this with my dual displays because of course you can run a dual display on this machine because if you take a look around the ports here we have a uh, dual Thunderbolt 2 and on the other side of the laptop we have an HDMI so what I basically do is I connect both of my displays with DisplayPort to my desktop usually but uh, my displays also have HDMI and a VGA I will usually connect uh, the MacBook Pro via HDMI. I have a Thunderbolt to HDMI adapter and this one just connects directly to one of the displays and that uh, suits me very well. Of course we also have the uh, USB 3's everywhere. We have two of those. We have a headphone jack which is absent these days. Dual microphones on the side. The uh, lightning port there. Or lightning. <laughs> what do I call it? Lightning. MagSafe? It's really getting out of fashion isn't it? And, uh, of course, an SD card slot that is also wired to the PCI Express bus, if I am not mistaken. Which is nice if you have UFS uh, SD cards. On the bottom, we can see the major signs of that this machine was actually used. Because, of course, you can obviously see there's a dent there. And I guess uh, if my camera was actually somewhat decent, you could make out there's a couple of uh, scratches on the bottom. And the feet have some wear marks. You can see the wear marks on the feet there. I think that uh, is pretty visible. But that's about all there is to it. There's also something that you might notice if you take a look at this, uh, the top of this display unit. It is a bit rougher than you would normally expect from a MacBook Pro. So this was probably uh, 
a third party display housing. The display itself is definitely the same quality as you would expect from, uh, from an Apple display. So I think it is a real retina display with just a third party cover on it when they replaced it. So, But that doesn't bother me too much because this one is actually quite a bit more scratch resistant than the usual uh, soft aluminum is. And this is really a bit more gritty, a bit more rough. Uh, and definitely feels a lot more scratch resistant and it has proven to be more scratch resistant as well so that basically uh, sums up my little experience here and uh, that also concludes the overview of my late 2013 13 inch retina macbook pro uh, again whether it will be with me for a long time i will not know until well until i actually decide to get another itch with the new apple stuff and i will actually buy myself a brand new macbook pro which might happen. I sometimes do crazy impulsive stuff like that. Uh, we'll see it when that happens and I'll do an unboxing of course. But uh, for the time being I'm uh, definitely enjoying this machine and I am really uh, wanting a bit more from the Mac. If only Apple would actually hurry up with their uh, refresh for the 13-inch MacBook Pro so I can actually get a uh, quad-core cable like refresh in a 13-inch non-touchable model. That would be the perfect laptop for me. But uh, we'll see when that, hap when that happens. So uh, that rumored cheaper uh, MacBook Air replacement hasn't come around yet, so we'll see. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.